been getting a lot of offers. It's not close to what you want. A decent amount of time. What's up, dogs? It's your boy, Daryl. Look, I'm here back with another one. I got another, a new session for y'all today. It's called the Closers Cut, where we're going to be going over some of the ninja sales tactics that are going on on these calls that you may not even notice that's going on. These are tactics that I use myself. I use with my team. Should I use an everyday conversation? And alone, it 10x my conversion rate and just allow me to be way more persuasive, way more likable and get way more information. So stick to the end. I'm going to actually be doing a live role play with my guy, Nick, and we're going to be showing how to use some of these tactics in live action. Stay tuned. So what is mirroring? Mirroring is a tactic that I use with my team that involves repeating the last one to three words of a sentence that your seller says, right? So you're going to repeat literally the last one to three words. It's a very simple technique. This is why I love it. It's simple, but it's super helpful. The reason why we do it is it's going to get you way more information than you would have got from just asking a regular question. Yeah. When it comes to information gathering, this is going to be one of your best tools. It's usually used when the seller is being very vague. They're not giving you much information. Um, and you know that there's something deeper. You don't want to ask the same questions over and over, right? This is going to be a lot more fluid. It's going to be a lot more smooth and you're going to, it's going to not feel like you're, you're asking questions. You're not going to feel like you're interviewing the, the seller rather than you're working with them. You guys are working together to come up with a solution. They're going to sound like you're, you're listening, right? When you repeat the last things that they say, you're going to send, they're going to feel like you're, you're listening to them. They're going to understand that you're listening because you, you just repeated exactly what they said. But at the same time, it's like, I'm hearing you, but I'm not at the same time. I need you to elaborate. And what that does is it allows them to start speaking more. And what they do is a lot of times they start using more words than they used before, and they end up saying more than they wanted to say in the beginning. So we get way more information using mirrors. And the most important part about this tactic is your tone. You want to have a curious, interested tone. You want to sound like you're very interested in what they're talking about. So I'm going to show you exactly how this works in the role play session. Let's go. Nick, what, I what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to do a, a mock role play okay. where I'm going to be the buyer. You're going to be a seller. It's going to be like a in-person appointment or a walk in your house. Um, I'm going to ask you questions to, to get you starting to talk and you're going to be pretty vague, right? Don't give me all the information. Let me use the right tactics and techniques and ask the right questions to pull it out. And yeah, once we're done, we'll, we'll talk about how you feel. All right. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. Cool. So Nick, I mean, this is a, a beautiful house. What, why do you think it hasn't sold yet? I have no idea, Daryl. I mean, we've been getting a lot of offers. Been getting a lot of offers. Yeah. I mean, the realtor's coming back with offers and we're denying them or denying them. It's just not, it's not at the, it's not even close to what we want. It's not close to what you want. No, no, it's it's way too far off. I mean, it's it's way too far off. We have a decent amount of time, so why why take the first one? A decent amount of time? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's not like we need to leave right now, right? There's still other things that we, we need to do before we just get up and leave. Okay, so it sounds like you're not really in a rush to sell this house. Not in a rush to, to give it away. To give it away? Yeah, I mean, they, they want to buy it at half of what it's worth and, you know, it's dated, but it's, you know, we're living, we're living in the house. Do you want to buy it at half of what it's worth? Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy, Daryl. I mean, I hope you wouldn't give me any, any offer like that. No, what's it worth? I mean, Zillow is saying it's worth like three, 300,000 right now. 300,000. And if I fix it up, because I know you said it's a little dated. So if I fix it up, put some work into the property and... You know, make it HGTV standards. What do you think it could sell for on the market again? I mean, I would say what Zillow says, right? You could probably get a little higher if you're going HGTV. I don't know what you guys do, but you Got know, it. there's work that needs to be done in the bathroom. There's some kitchen stuff that you know you you need to work on. Some kitchen stuff we need to work on. Yeah, I mean, you could paint the cabinets, choose what you what you want to do but the appliances you know definitely need to be updated that's for sure got it has anybody explained to you how how they actually make those offers or they just been giving you those low ball offers yeah i mean we've just been getting them we hear them from the agent and that's about it 
Got it. So, Nick, if I'm going to buy this for cash, I'm going to look to, like I said, put it back on the market after I fix it up, make it HGTV ready. All right. And, you know, with just from hearing what needs to be done, if I buy it at what you're asking for and I can sell it for the same price after I put work into it, you know what I'm saying? How am I supposed to make any money I mean, on this? I'm not as, I mean, I'm not asking for 300000 Okay. You know, I mean... But I'm not asking for 150 at the same time. Yeah. So what do you need to make you to make you happy? You know, make I you make mean, a decision. At least like somewhere close to, you know, 280,000. 280, yeah, I think that would be fair. Just so you know, you guys make money and we're able to to go on to our next next adventure. Yeah, Nick. I don't. I don't think we'll be a good fit, man. What what happens if nobody comes up to to two hundred eighty thousand? Uh, I mean, if if nobody comes up to two hundred eighty thousand, we can just wait wait it out. Okay. When the market goes back up. So you don't need to sell this right now. That's what it sounds like. Not right now. Okay. Not right now, but you know we're looking to. Okay. So how how we work, Nick? I, I know we we look to help people who need to sell. Right, like I, I can, I can come back and give you an offer, right? But yeah. it sounds like you don't want to sell this for another three, four, shoot, six months down the line. Um, if we don't get something close to what we want, yeah. yeah. That's, that's and right. what's your what's your realtor saying? Um, I mean, they're they're thinking we should kind of drop the price, you know, closer to next next week. Next week. Yeah, I mean. It, who knows? And then they'll say oh, the week after, the week after. Right? I don't want them to keep doing it. That's why you know I'm even contemplating doing that in the first place. We might just take it off. Got it. Yeah, man. If you don't, if you don't need to sell this, it it sounds like we should just follow up maybe in a, in a few months to see if anything changes. You know, we're we're usually helping families who who have to sell, right? They need to sell or something's going to happen, yeah. right? Some, something bad's going to happen where they have to sell this. So I need to go yeah, solve no, their problem, yeah, right? So, yeah, yeah man, I, I will have my team continue to reach out to you. Um, but yeah, I, it, we just probably wouldn't be a good fit for you right now. I don't want to waste your time. All right. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you. Yeah. Sounds good, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, did, yeah, did you notice, how did you feel when I was, when I was mirroring? Did you even really notice that i was like just repeating the same words as you no no we were literally just having a conversation um i didn't even i didn't even know i don't even i can tell you how many times you even did it did you feel like i cared yeah no 100 okay. percent. i felt like you cared more so because of the the tone as to what you were saying yeah you know and do you see how how even in a case where there's not much motivation right the mirroring it it shows me that Right. So I, I'm, I mirrored you. I, I was repeating the same words that you're saying. And I come to find out that if you don't sell this in the next couple of months, it's really not that big a deal to you. Right. So I politely told you that we're, hey, we're not a good fit. I kept the relationship. We're still friends. Right. And I did all that because I was mirroring and I didn't even I don't even think I asked many questions in the beginning of the of the conversation. Yeah. And that's what I love about it. When you told me this, that's what I fell in love with is the fact that you could say the least amount and get the most back yep. is a tactic that you guys need to be implementing because, you know, he found out that this was not a motivated lead and you didn't really say much, right? You did it pretty yeah. quickly and then on to the next one. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, this is a tactic that you can use every single day, right? I started off practicing like in the grocery store in the laundry grocery store maybe at the gas station with my friends and family it may feel weird at first you may feel awkward like oh somebody's gonna say something because i'm repeating the same words as them i promise you they're not right so try this out try it out when when you're you're around some friends and family first and then do it at a more high stakes take where you're where you're actually negotiating something or looking to buy a house you know so practice this practice this Put the put these tactics in the in the place, and you know you're only gonna get better when you try. So it's gonna get easier and easier as you do this. The main thing is you you wanna you wanna be interested in this person, right? You wanna be curious. Nick, did you even notice when I was saying it, right? I would I would get I would lean closer, right? Mm -hmm. I would I would 
scratch my face up a little bit. I would actually yeah, show that I'm expression. interested, right? Yeah. My facial expressions would show that I'm that I'm interested and my tone would follow, right? So being interested is the key part to, to mirroring and having a curious tone, right? Dale Carnegie talks about it and how to win friends and influence people. Interesting people are interested, right? So if you show somebody that you're interested in them, you, you're curious in, in what they have to say, you wanna learn about what they have to talk about, use mirroring because it's going to allow you to be curious without asking questions and you're going to make a friend they're going to feel listened to they're going to feel wanted at the same time if you got any value from this video make sure you like it subscribe to the channel hit the bell so you get reminders because we're dropping every single day and drop a comment and let us know how you like this new session the closers cut we're going to be dropping a bunch more videos going in depth on these top secret ninja tactics that nobody wants to talk about we're going to talk about it all. Get you some deals, baby. Let's go.